Hey, Trucked Up guys and gals, getting your hands on an affordable electric truck with great range will likely happen because of an unlikely source. Let me explain. But first, let's just acknowledge that the biggest reason most people won't get an electric truck is price. I want a Rivian R1T. Okay, so all I gotta have is uh, 120 grand lying around. I mean, while we're at it, why don't I, you know, Model X, Model S, BMW 7 Series, Mercedes S-Class, Porsche Taycan while we're at it, F-150 Lightning Platinum, 120K. We're talking about a truck, right? So that takes about 75% of the working truck buyer out of the market. Boom. Now let's talk availability. Right now, if you want to get an EV truck, you're going to purchase a Rivian R1T or an F-150 Lightning. Now, oh yes, everyone says there's all kinds of things that you can get. Oh yeah. But none of them exist yet. November 30th, the Cybertruck is finally going to hit the market. Wow, well, there you go. That's going to be cool. Why not get one of them? Well, by the sounds of things from rumor trickles, the price is going to be the same range. So here we are again, but let's get back to availability. There's a one or two million pre-order waiting list. And the first year they're planning on putting out 100,000 or so, maybe getting up to a quarter million a year. So you should be able to get your Cybertruck in uh, 2031. So now let's talk about why you wouldn't buy one of these if you are like me, you're a truck owner. Okay, I am driving an F-150 Lightning XLT. Uh, you want to own an EV truck? Uh, so do I. Uh, I don't own this truck. The bank does. <laughs> you gotta turn it on. I'm fine. One day I too shall own a truck that doesn't require me living in it to be able to afford it. Anyway, so getting your hands on one of these things and putting it to use as a truck, that's where the big failure occurs and that's the elephant in the room. We all know it. Let's just say it, range. So they should just come out with a truck with more range. Remember that cost thing? We're gonna get to that. This truck gets 386 kilometers, so 230 to 240 mile range. But for anybody who's gonna be throwing a flatbed trailer on the back and towing around, you know, a front end loader or a cat, eh, not gonna work very well. Not only is it about range, it'd be fine if there was infrastructure. Elon Musk, Chief Twit, Twit Chief, Mr. X, whatever. It, it, Jim Farley, when he went on his little <laughs> road trip. They're going on about, it's the infrastructure. We don't need to have big range trucks if we've got the infrastructure. But the infrastructure hasn't taken into consideration trucks at all because they're all in parking lots. They're all next to a curb. They're not like a gas station where you pull through. So please tell me how you charge an F-150 Lightning, a Tesla Cybertruck, a Silverado EV, or a Rivian R1T pulling a 30-foot trailer that doesn't have a pull-through charging area. You don't. So how do we get the infrastructure and the vehicle to get to that place where everything about an EV truck is superior to an ICE vehicle, internal combustion vehicle. Well, they're almost there already. Really, they are. Like from torque, horsepower, convenience, functionality, practicality. But those other things are huge failings for people who, who are gonna use a truck as a truck. So how the heck do we get there? That whole price thing is a problem for the manufacturers because Ford, GM, Stellantis, where do they make their money? They make their money off the truck division. Trucks make them good coin. So now picture Jim Farley, CEO of Ford. Try to be in his shoes just for a moment. Hey everybody, uh, so good news. Um, the company made billions of dollars again this year. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, and we did it off of trucks. So we made this other truck and uh, we really want people to buy. But every time we sell one, we lose our shorts. 
I don't see a lot of marketing material coming out. I don't I don't think there's going to be a Jim Farley buy a lightning brochure. They're getting their butts kicked on these things because they're not to scale. They're not building them to the numbers that can bring down the prices overall by having large volumes. If they try to push the truck, they lose billions. And what do you think the likelihood is that now Jim Farley's going to go, you know, shareholders, I just want to share something that we're going to do. So we lost $4.3 billion in our EV division. Uh, so I've decided we're going to put another $4 billion into battery and range development. I think he likes his job. I do. I don't think he'd have a job if he did that. So how do we get EVs, EV trucks in particular, to a point where they're profitable and they can invest money into these things and we can get our trucks doing what we need our trucks to do. Well, we need a whole bunch of non-truck buyers to buy EV trucks for non-truck uses. And unfortunately, those are the people we truck owners mock, shame, and laugh at. Oh, yes, we do. Don't say you don't. We do. Yes, we do. Yes, we all do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that guy right there. <laughs> he uses his truck at Walmart. And done nothing with it. He got nine kids in it. He's using it as a newfangled SUV. Bet he never taken it off road. Bet he doesn't even know what 4x4 stands for. Four, four. They're cappuccino drinkers. They're going to the cafe. They're going to use the vehicle as an upscale SUV. And what we need to do is pat them on the back. We need to celebrate them. We need to welcome Raul from tech department at Microsoft into our truck club. We need to walk up to him and say, you know, I am so happy to see you become a member of our group. Welcome to the Federation of People Who Drive Trucks. Welcome. No, it's okay. You don't need to use the bed. You want to know what the thing sticking out the back's for, the hole, the square? That's for, that's, that's where you put the trailer hitch. What's a hitch? Uh, well, you put the ball ball on it. What's a ball? It's okay, Raul. Double-double, mm. oh. decaf, oat milk latte, 12 ounce. Not too hot. The trendsetters who think a tough, environmentally friendly, lifestyle-affirming, three-ton blob of metal and lithium-ion batteries is more in than a Porsche or a Maserati will get electric trucks down in price. They're the ones who get us there. I can guarantee you that it won't be the modified truck gearhead crowd. Oh no. The people who are willing to spend six figures to raise a truck six inches are not the kind of folk who are going to go out and line up to buy an electric truck. Oh no. No. The diesel heads and the off-road aficionados, they're a different crowd. And they might come around to EVs if EVs get to where they want them to be first. However, Raul doesn't care. Raul will get us there first. Hey, if you love trucks and everything trucked up, but are wondering about where things are going and how we'll get there, join me to discover if this new wave of EV trucks stands up to the real world, or if they're all just a lot of Silicon Valley hot air. Make sure to like and subscribe. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.